Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. Today I am going to discuss 25 key points about cultural studies. In my previous video, I had already told you about what is cultural studies and then I discussed about some of the major theories of cultural studies and in this video I'm going to discuss from the beginning that how cultural studies came as a theory and how it developed so through these key points I'm going to discuss uh, the major points of cultural studies which will be very much important for uh, from your exam point of view so let's start let's see what is cultural studies and how it begins so Cultural studies, the beginning, the first point. Cultural studies developed in Britain. Cultural studies developed in Britain as a reaction against liberal humanism and orthodox Marxism. So it came as a reaction of liberal humanism and orthodox Marxism as an engagement with new left in the 1950s. So it came as an engagement with new left in the 1950s. The discussion of culture and civilization in the literary studies came from Matthew Arnold's work Culture and Anarchy where he discussed about high and elite culture. So the discussion of culture and civilization came from Matthew Arnold's work which is Culture and Anarchy. This is important uh, which was published in 1869 where he said that the elite's culture, the high culture or the culture which was practiced by the elite elite. Uh, people these are the main culture these are the real culture so he rejects the working class culture the lower class culture and he said the culture is uh, the real culture is the elite culture the uh, culture which was uh, practiced by the elite people and from there the discussion of culture and civilization came then our second point that the origin. Cultural studies developed in Britain as a reaction against the high or elite culture. So, cultural studies came in Britain as a reaction of high and elite or elite culture, reached its peak in the works of F.R. Lewis and Q.D. Lewis, Great Tradition. So, when F.R. Lewis and his wife, Q.D. Lewis, he, they discussed in uh, their work Great Tradition, they discussed that how culture developed. They narrow the definition of culture by rejection of popular culture as a contaminated by capitalism. So they narrow uh, the definition of culture. So they narrow down the definition of culture by rejecting the popular culture as a contaminated by capitalism. They said that the popular culture came from the uh, capital um, capitalism from, came from the capitalist society and they rejected the popular culture and they narrowed down the definition of culture. This is important that F.R. Lewis and uh, Q.D. Lewis they uh, discussed culture in their work Great Tradition. Then our third point that from here Richard Hogarth and Raymond Williams took up the discussion of culture. So as you know I had already uh, told you before in my previous video that Richard Hogarth and William Raymond Williams were the important figures uh, uh, for cultural studies. So they took this discussion uh, of culture from their work and rooted it in the new left and the Frankfurt School. These are very important. So they rooted it in, the, in New Left and Frankfurt School. They took the discussion that what is culture because they both, as I already told you, they both belong from working class and they said that our culture you did not ex uh, accept as culture. So they took the discussion. They, they were the um, intellectual and they they uh, took their education from the universities and then they said that culture never discussed the working class um, practices or, or working class uh, people's culture or, or the lower class people's culture. So they took the discussion and they started it uh, and it roots in the new left and the Frankfurt school. Then our fourth point that the what is... Um, 
Frankfurt School. Frankfurt School was a group of scholars who developed a critical approach to cultural and communication studies in the 1930s. So they developed a uh, cultural and communication studies in the 1930s. Their work has influenced the field of sociology, cultural studies and media studies. So they are the groups of scholars who developed a critical approach to cultural and communication studies in the 1930s. That's important. Then let's know more about uh, Frankfurt School. This is very much important. So they influenced new left. Uh, new left and cultural studies associated with the institution of social research at the Goethe University Frankfurt emerged during the interwar period 1918 to 9, uh, 1913 in Weimar Republic Germany important figures were uh, intellectual academics political dissidents and they note down these name who are the members of Frankfurt school because this is very much important and they uh, most of the time they ask this uh, that odd one out so first is Max Hockheimer then Theodore Adorno then Erich from Herbert Marcuse Walter Benjamin Frederick Pollock Leo Lowenthal Jargon Hebermas so these are the important members from Frankfurt school and um, they are also associated with the new left um, school critical of capitalism as well as orthodox marxism and leninism so they critic they were criticized as uh, they critic uh, criticized the um, orthodox marxism and leninism explored alternate parts of social development then what are their major uh, ideas their major ideas or practices are critical theory this is also important you have to note down it that they practices these ideas which are the critical theory culture industry negative dialects uh, dialectics eclipse of um, reason dialectical method Critic of modernity and capitalism. Very much important that they discussed about critical theory, cultural industry, negative dialectics, eclipse of reason, dialectical method, critic of modernity and capitalism. Then let's uh, know about what is uh, the culture industry. Our sixth point. Culture industry enlightenment as a mass deception is a chapter in the 1944 uh, book from of L dialectical dialectic of enlightenment by critical theorist theodore adorno and max hockeymer so this is a very much important this book name that the dialectic of enlightenment by theorist theodore adorno and max hockeymer the chapter discuss the culture industry the concept of culture industry the culture industry is the idea that popular culture is like an industry that produces standardized culture goods and these goods include these goods includes film radio program magazine and music literature and art so what they said that what is cultural industry the cultural industry is the idea that popular culture is like an industry so it's like an industry that produces standardized cultural goods because these goods are like the music the popular culture the music the literature the art films that how they the popular culture make a industry because what you like the popular music the popular uh, book the popular film and through it the society the capitalism the capital they make their money they make their industry so this is called the culture industry then let's know more about it that adorno and hockeymar argue that the culture industry is dangerous because uh, because it creates all psychological needs that can only be made by the products of capitalism manipulates mass society into passivity make people doc, 
डोकाइल एंड कंटेंट सो सो व्हाट हैपेन दैट दे डिस्कस द एडोनो एंड हॉकी मत दे डिस्कस दैट कल्चर इंडस्ट्री इज डेंजरस व्हाई बिकॉज़ व्हेन यू सी समथिंग सम ड्रेस इन द फिल्म एंड इट बिकम्स द ट्रेंड्स एंड यू वांट दिस वेरी मच एंड इट बिकम्स एन इंडस्ट्री इट बिकम्स ए पार्ट ऑफ टू गेन मनी फॉर द कैपिटलिस्ट सोसाइटी एंड इट्स क्रिएट ए साइकोलॉजिकल नीड्स ए फॉल्स साइकोलॉजिकल नीड्स दैट यू थिंक दैट यू हैव टू गेट दिस ड्रेस टू बी इन ट्रेंड टू बी लुक ब्यूटिफुल बिकॉज इट गिव्स यू द साइकोलॉजिकल ट्रेंड्स एंड नाउ यू सी दैट इन फिल्म इन म्यूजिक इन हिप हॉप म्यूजिक हाउ यू सी दैट द सिंगर इज ड्रेसिंग यू वॉन्ट टू बी लाइक them so this makes the false psychological needs and adorno and hockeyim are talked about this that how they create a false psychological needs that you think that uh, only this thing can make you happy only this mobile only these uh, gadgets only this dress only this thing can make you happy so you cannot be content in your life no matter their economic circumstances um Adorno and Hockeymar also argue that culture industry is related to late capitalism. So the culture industry, this is important point that uh, they said that culture industry uh, related to late capitalism. In late capitalism, all kinds of culture became part of the capitalist system of production. So let's see our seventh point, which is the new left. we had already talked about frankfurt school and new left they both related with cultural studies the beginning of cultural studies uh, how cultural studies came so now we are going to talk about new left and raymond williams and richard hogar both associated with this so the new left was the leftist ideology that moved away from the traditional old left focus on the labor uh, issues the new left focus on issues such as alienation anomy authoritarianism some new left intellectuals include which are they please make point first is harvard uh, marcus a philosopher from frankfurt school so as i already told you that some members from frankfurt school are also associated with the uh, with the new left so he is the uh, philosopher from frankfurt school and he wrote the famous book eros and civilization very much important eros and civilization a philosophical inquiry into freud and also his other book one dimensional man studies in the ideology of advanced industry industrial society so his uh, two book first is eros and civilization a philosophical inquiry into freud where he talk about, about freud and uh, his second book one dimensional man studies in the ideology of advanced industrial society so the members of this uh, group is arnest block Uh, Raymond Williams, Stuart Hall. The New Left Review was so. The New Left Review was established in January nineteen sixties when the New Reasoner and Universities and New and the Left Review merged their boards. Stuart Hall was the first editor in chief of the merged publication. So the New Left Review uh, published in uh, established in nineteen sixties. So what uh, they do? These both school they are uh, they have the importance in developing of cultural studies. So let's see the our eight point, which is Center for Contemporary Cultural Studies, which is CCCS. This is important as I already told you in my uh, previous video that formed as a result of re-evaluation of the class and elite ca- character of culture as appeared in the traditional literary studies. New approaches to cultural culture pioneered by Hogart and Williams in the nineteen fifties and sixties influences Hogart's Ulysses. Uh, sorry, uses of literacy, which published in nineteen fifty seven, and Williams Culture and Society which published in 1958 Hogarth founded this is important that Hogarth founded CCCS at the University of Brigham in 1960s 
Four, become the first director of it, and Hogarth appointed Stuart Hall as assistant by nineteen seventy one. Hall Stuart Hall also became uh, the director. So first uh, director was Hogarth, then Stuart Hall. This point you have to remember. Then in the late nineteen nineties, uh, restructuring of university led to the elim elimination of CCCS. <coughs> Then our ninth point, when uh, where I am going to talk about Richard Hogarth, as I already told you, but there um, are I added some key points which will be very much important for your exam point of view. Then uh, see Richard Hogarth, uh, who born in nineteen eighteen and died in two thousand. Fourteen, hailed from a working class background. As I told you, that uh, Raymond Williams, Hogarth, then uh, E. P. Thompson, they came from working class background. So they understand the suffering and pain, and the uh, they understand that why the um, working class culture never uh, get place in the uh, elite culture. So they. Uh, came from working class background. Tried to privilege the organic. Uh, working class culture over mass culture discuss the changes that happened to working class culture with the advent of capitalism uses of literacy his uh, famous book aspects of the working class life the full title uses of literacy aspects of working class life which published in 1957 and attempt to understand the changes in culture in britain caused by massification so he used the word massification influence of mass media so it has two parts first part recalls the were lost working class culture in northern england and second um, attacks the impact of post war consumer culture so uses of literacy um, is an attempt to understand the changes of culture in britain and caused by massification influence of mass media that how mass media changed the uh, uh, culture of britain and it has two part this work has two part first recalls that how lost uh, working class culture in northern england that how uh, the culture of northern england was lost and attacks the impact of post war consumer culture so it also attacks the uh, impact of post war consumer culture so uh, let's see his important work quickly important works please note down the way we live now it's also a, uh, the same title anthony trollope also uh, wrote the way of uh, the way we live now so when i searched in google i first saw the anthony trollope then i uh, see that in uh, the road there was also Richard Hogarth, the way we live now. So Anthony Trollope also wrote it. Okay, so important works the way we live now, which published in nineteen ninety five. Then an imagined life nineteen ninety two between two world politics and anti politics um, and unpolitical. So the way we live now, an imagined life nineteen ninety two between two world. politics anti politics and unpolitical which published in 200 uh, 2001 then see about ep thompson our 10th point who was born in 1924 and died in 1993 so richard who got born in 19 um, 18 i think uh, and he born in 1924 so let's see more about him british historian new left scholar the making of the working uh, class so his important work the making of the uh, um, uh, working class you can expect this type of question in matching question so which was published in 1963 massive book on the development of the uh, development of the working class during 18th and 19th century fast systematic history of the working class defined class as a relationship studied documents of uh, on their lives opinion and such as court records folk art songs ballads documents very different from the historians look at in those times to study the development of class 
consciousness so you know that they all came from working class culture but he, he try to write about working class uh, people's culture but he saw that there is no document so how can you know about the working class culture from 18 to 19th century people uh, so what he did he did a massive work he just uh, go into the uh, uh, police uh, go to check the police record that how they are um, to check the criminal record to check the documents then they he also go the folk art songs ballads and from there that they are the working class cultures were never written so he have to research he have to study for uh, their uh, criminal uh, documents they are diaries uh, or uh, the documentation to uh, study the development of working class consciousness so he did a massive work and uh, then he wrote the making of the english working class that what he want to know the suffering the pain the culture of the working class and then he wrote his massive work the making of the english working class which published in 1963 so hats off to him then uh, his uh, important work i had uh, noted down you have to uh, write it down also so william morris romantic to revolutionary it's a biography of, about william morris uh, william morris romantic to revolutionary published in 1935 then weeks and hunters published in 1975 the poverty of theory published in 1978 customs in common published in 1980 making history witness against the beast and uh, nine who is published in 1993 writing by candle light so uh, these are his important work william morris uh, then weeks and hunters the poverty of theory customs in common making history witness against the beast writing by candle light then see our most important writer uh, theorist who is raymond williams so he was born in 1921 um, as i know that uh, ep thompson born in 1924 and he born in 1921 so and died in 1988 born in a working class family and new left theorist culture and society his important work 1958 against the notion of high culture asserted culture is a whole way of life the idea of lived culture so he asserted that culture is a whole way of life and related concepts that culture is ordinary democratic view to uh, give a democratic view studies culture production to understand that how form of communication the press advertising education were instrumental in the function of capitalism so he talked about that culture is ordinary and how the press the advertising the media the education instrumental in the function of capitalism then um, in our 12th point let's know about culture and society so is a book by wells uh, progressive uh, writer raymond william and it was published in 19 58 the book explores how the concept of culture developed in great britain from 18th century to uh, through the uh, 20th centuries so he talked about that how the culture um, developed uh, in great britain from 18th century to 20th century then uh, let's know about the book um that he explores how the concept of culture developed in great britain okay this repeated then identifies uh, the identifies the end of the 18th century as a period of economic and social transition so he said uh, that he identified the 18th century as a period of economic and social transition in this book and he here this is important sorry he here um, chooses five keywords which are the industry democracy class art and culture to chart the their semantic shift that how this there the semantic shift happened from uh, 18th century to 20th century then 
connects this shift was a larger discursive transition during the late 18th century ranges over british literary history from george eliot to george orwell so he studied from george orwell to george orwell in his uh, work so this is very much important and it also uh, a complex ways that how economy really reality uh, saves the imagination then his next work which is concept uh, sorry his uh, concept that concept of culture associated with raymond williams regarded the culture as an all inclusive entity asserted that culture is a whole way of life so you should write down this quote the idea that lived culture material intellectual spiritual so the idea lived culture material intellectual spiritual language gives meaning to lived culture language gives meaning to lived culture culture means the art and learning trace the evolution of general human culture shaped by local and temporary systems so it related um, culture is ordinary his um, famous speech the culture is ordinary not democratic not elites that i already told you that they um, try to emphasize that culture is ordinary and you you think that as matthew arnold think that elites culture is the only real culture and they said that no there are few elites but there are many um, working class uh, people or the middle class so culture is democratic not elite elites then asserted that democracy and culture should develop together so culture and democracy should develop together so that how we describe modify extend the preserved experience is uh, fundamental to the development of culture and society study is culture production to understand that how form of uh, communication like press advertising education were instrumental in the function of capitalism so the same thing they are uh, saying then his uh, next work or 14th point which is the wrong revolution which is very much important work which published in 1961 please uh, note down the uh, publication date raymond williams there will uh, raymond williams uh, wrote it and there will be a revolution when coming generations will change culture society by asserting popular culture and democrat uh, democratic values and public ownership of communication technology so here he used the the uh, three form of culture this is very much important please note down that raymond william said that there will be a revolution when coming generation will change culture and society by asserting popular and democratic values and public ownership first is dominant culture what is dominant culture dominant culture is the clearly visible aspects of our practices attitudes mean uh, dominant culture means the trends mean the elite trends like uh, now you are uh, using this uh, this uh, dress now you are using this dress you are wearing this dress you are the elite you are the rich people you are the aristocrat so you are the dominant culture you are the politician you are the dominant culture you set your culture so this is called dominant culture the clearly visible aspects of our practices the celebrity what they wear so these are the dominant culture and what is residual culture residual culture is influence of old cultural practices and remain in trace of modern culture so what happened that um, the you know that bengalis bengalis always um, um, very uh, very much habituated with uh, the tagore song so there are some uh, singer there are some uh, artists who want to sing uh, tagore song as it is as uh, tagore wrote it so they uh, did not uh, allow you to 
little change a little bit change so they are the dominant culture because they are uh, they are uh, tagore was very much uh, important and they did not allow you to uh, change a single thing so they are the dominant culture but these are the old culture these are the dominant culture but now residual culture what the happened that when the new generation came they also like um, the tiger song but they want to change a little so they want to uh, sing the song like them so they did not fully change it the residual culture they did not fully change it but they want to change a little to simplify to uh, sing better so influence of lower old culture they have the old culture in them plus they have their modern culture or uh, them so both uh, marginalized or sorry both mixed so influence of old culture remains it remains like trace with the modern culture but now the emergent or oppositional or you can say the counter culture came and they just broke the take our song and they mix it like a hip hop song you see you you can um, see it that uh, it, this traditional song also uh, used in hip hop so they just broke the uh, culture they Im, this is called emergent or oppositional culture also called counter culture because they broke down uh, everything and new culture practices that are being constantly created in the modern culture for instance counter culture or challenge the dominant culture so they just challenge the dominant culture and they just broke down this uh, old tradition and they try to new they are not um, they are not give any uh, any credits of the dominant culture so uh, they just broke down it not like so residual is middle they want Uh, dominant also they want modern also dominant uh, is the real and count the oppositional they just broke uh, down everything and they are the counter culture they counter the dominant culture okay so then it's next next work the communications uh, is a uh, book which published in 1962 it's a proceeding book that explores the communication including computer radio sorry including computer uh, computer radio television printing and photography that how these uh, channels or effects in our communication so he is writing communication which published in 1962 it's a proceeding book that explores the communication okay then his next work william argues that communication is a major way in which reality is continually formed and changed and he also distinguishes between authoritarian paternal commercial and democratic organizational uh, forms of media so william argues that communication is the major way in which reality is continually formed and changed he also distinguishes between authoritarian paternal and commercial and democratic uh, organization forms of media so these are also important so these are also important then communication is a available uh, communication is available in this format uh, like kindle hand of cover and paper bag then communication which published in 1962 distinguishes between authoritarian paternal commercial democratic organizational uh, forms of media Uh, which repeat twice so what is authoritarian authoritarian communication you know that political communication involves in state control manipulation censorship of the media so how politi- uh, politician they try to control us the manipulate us censor us then paternal communication you know that authoritarian communication with uh, the conscience and there is ideological control that aims to impose certain moral values on audience you know that how parents uh, try to force us 
try to put their moral thought in uh, to us so this is called paternal communication then commercial communication you know that in the market driven there is a commercial um, control that you have to, uh, the commercial communication when you try to um, um, buy something the market driven co commercial control then democratic communication based on the cooperative rationality and the freedom to speak and receive so there are authoritarian communication then paternal communication commercial communication and last is democratic communication so this is interesting right so such communications are means of participation and common discussion william later argued for a cultural democracy that combines public service media culture and cooperative and local media that establish new kinds of communal cooperative and collective institution similar to public sphere so he uh, means a participation of common discussion then his uh, work also a uh, related term mobile privatization the term was uh, first uh, used by raymond williams in his 1974 book television technology and cultural form so this is important william describes the main contra contradiction in modern society as the between as the one between mobility and home centered living mobile privatization <coughs> can be described as feeling of being at home while connected to a device in a mobile setting you know that how it happens to our uh, time also that how we feel that uh, if we have our mobile we think that uh, we are at home uh, because it is our now become our whole world we cannot connect people who sits beside us but we can connect uh, mobile or social media and commenting liking each other's posts so it becomes our home then modern tragedy which published in 1966 discussed tragedy as a directly related to culture society and also experience in life so modern tragedy which discussed the tragedy as directly related to culture society and experience in life then uh, the next work next work is the country and the city sorry the country and the city which published in 1973 his most important work analyze the concept of countryside and cities in my previous video i already told you about the work that they said that uh, william raymond williams said that you said that if i want ask you that write five sentence about village you will say that the village uh, is a natural beauty the village has natural beauty the people are innocent they are simple uh, there are uh, river there are uh, trees everywhere there are greenery everywhere but if you go in a village now uh, now did you uh, can you see this same scenery no not at all if i give you to uh, uh, if i ask you to paint a village you are going to uh, draw like a river is flowing then the beautiful uh, scenery the greenery but now this is not happening this is not uh, the truth because now the mobile tower is in the village people are using android people are using phone people are using zomato everything the modern uh, the urban like the urban culture they are using it so why you are still uh, in your uh, thought you are still there because you don't want to change so he said that the country and the city the university uh, when he was in the university he taught uh, he um, get the idea that the the idea not change people people change the society change but the idea of country and city not change Be, why so he asked this question and uh, this 
work is all about this that that analyze the concept of the countryside and the city to show how these concepts symbolizes socio economic changes under the industrialization and capitalism william explores images of the rural and urban world in english literature since 16th century shows how some have remained while others have changed so he said that why your idea did not changed because the world is changed but your idea is still the same why gives literary examples to support argument that there has been no boundary line no sar because there is the hybrid now there is hybrid culture in village you get everything like urban city uh, urban and in urban also you get everything uh, like village so there is no dichotomy between town and village capitalism did not come from the outside and destroy the manorial utopia but the seeds of urbanism and commercial uh, commercialism were sown by the rural aristocracy itself then his next work is uh, the keywords Keywords, a vocabulary of uh, culture and society, is a collection of essays by Raymond Williams that uh, was uh, first published in 1976. The book is a reference work that concludes essay on words that are important understanding the modern world. So it it was published in nineteen sixty nineteen seventy six is a reference work that includes essays words that how it important in understanding our modern world. Then Marxism and literature. This is also important work which was published in nineteen seventy seven. Introduced culture materialism. The important term uh, was coined here in this work. um the cultural materialism uh, it was also asked that who coined the term so the answer will be raymond williams is a method of criticism rooted in marxism stressing the interaction between culture artifacts like language literature their historical context like socio political economic factors understand culture as a product the process the british counterpart of american new historicism so and um, the cultural materialism word came from there and it's stressing the interaction between culture artifacts like language literature and their historical context in socio political economic factors then other important work by raymond williams they are culture and materialism 1980 towards uh, 2000 uh, which was published in 1983 then the politics of modernism which published in 1989 then we came into uh, other uh, important term by him which is selective tradition structure of feeling uh, this term always asked it was by Raymond Williams so selective tradition called structure of feeling uh, term came from Raymond Williams. So our next uh, theorist is uh, Stuart Hall. I am not going to deep uh, for this theorist. In my next video, I am going to um, explain more about him. So let's start. Let's give a brief introduction about him. Stuart Hall, who was born in nineteen thirty two. he was born in 1932 and uh, died in 2014 jamaican marxist uh, sociologist cultural theorist founder of new left review and model uh, of communication and model of communication laid the foundation of culture understanding of communication and four stages he uses first is production circulation and reproduction so production is the message circulation of the message in visual or written forms okay use um consumption of message and meaningful and reproduction effect of the message leading to action in my next video i'm going to elaborate this point so then uh, he also uh, wrote encoding and decoding part of communication uh, 
theory and reception theory encoding product uh, the production of message you know in paper one you uh, read it encoding the production of message using verbal and nonverbal uh, symbols and decoding mean negotiating the receiver with the text based uh, his or her knowledge culture background experience decoding can be preferred reading negotiated uh, reading or oppositional reading subculture arises when dominant culture are uh, decoded in the uh, new ways so i'm going to explain it in my next video because um, i have no time now so his uh, works are a circuit of culture then okay let me discuss uh, he uh, coined the term uh, thatcherism and his uh, works are you can read it by your own the uh, hard road to renewal the popular art encoding decoding in the television discourse what is the uh, what is this black in black popular culture the policing crisis familiar stranger the faithful triangle and model communication so that's all i hope you like it um, please watch this video twice to understand better in my next video i will discuss uh, about stuart hall and his um, uh, theory and his concepts so thank you for giving your time